What is up? This is your LA in a Minute. Today I'd like to talk about a brief history of the Sunset Strip. So the iconic thoroughfare began as a tiny 600-foot dirt road near the old plaza, named by a city employee who noticed the beauty of the setting sun as they traveled westward on the road. Sunset Boulevard was eventually extended west to link up with the wagon trails coming from nearby farms. What would become the heart of the Sunset Strip was the 240-acre ranch of Belgian board banker Victor Ponet on what is now the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Sunset Plaza Drive, surrounded by avocado groves, poinsettia fields, and squash farms. Ponet's property became part of an unincorporated town called Sherman, and in 1924, the first significant commercial development was called the Sunset Plaza. Since Sherman was unincorporated, it fell under the jurisdiction of the Sheriff's Department, which meant oversight of the area was relatively lax. Soon, speakeasies and LGBTQ-friendly clubs and informal casinos flourished on the unincorporated part of Sunset Boulevard. Called a haunt of motion picture stars, Sherman was itching for the glamour and recognition of its famous neighbor, so it renamed itself West Hollywood. Alongside the nightclubs and speakeasies, legitimate development began to flourish on the Strip in the late 20s and 30s. On the eastern tip, the legendary Chateau Marmont opened in 1929, and along with the repeal of Prohibition in 1933, it was a real turning point for this trip. Speakeasies could now go straight, and real money could go into the night spots that the area had been known for. But the real transformation was brought about by a gambling addict, mob associate, and crack journalist named Billy Wilkerson, who was the publisher of The Hollywood Reporter, who created a tabloid culture out of the most sinful period in Hollywood history. In the 30s and 40s, restaurants and nightclubs on the Sunset Strip like Sherry's, Ciro's, the Macombo, and the Trocadero were patronized by people working in the industry. Some of the expensive nightclubs and restaurants were said to be owned by gangsters like Mickey Cohen and Bugsy Siegel. By the 60s, the Sunset Strip had lost favor with movie people, but its restaurant, bars, and clubs served as an attraction for locals and tourists. It became a major gathering for the counterculture and was the scene of the Sunset Strip curfew riots in November 1966. Sunset Strip was the place to be for rock musicians and their fans. Led Zeppelin, The Doors, The Birds, Frank Zappa, and others played at the Whiskey A Go Go, Roxy, Pandora's Box, and London Fog. During the late 70s and 80s, the Sunset Strip became synonymous with the heavy metal movement. The Starwood, the Whiskey, the Roxy all became homes to metal bands like Van Halen, Quiet Riot, Motley Crue, and L.A. Guns. In 1984, West Hollywood became an independent city and the Strip was occupied by office buildings and hotels. In addition, pay-to-play policies in the music industry establishment moved the heart of the alternative music industry to the east. But to some, the Sunset Strip is still and always the heart of L.A. All right, L.A., it's been a minute.